Okay, in that case, you're alive. Now ready. Tell me whenever you're uh, you're ready to do this. It's your countdown thing in my bob. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, uh, mute that thing. All right, in three, two, one. Good luck. Thank you, man. <clears throat> so, uh, hi. This is uh, this is Sly Cooper, the Devious Raccoonist, uh, the all keys category. But uh, we're gonna get off right away with an explanation because we just skipped the entirety of the opening uh, level where Sly steals his police profile or police file so we can uh, get all the information on the bad guys that uh, killed this family and whatnot so we can he can find them and get vengeance again, <laughs> in this cutscene we'll, we'll kind of explain that a little bit more but uh, essentially what what happens is they didn't extend the death trigger Finally, the far enough to the wall so you can jump years. out over it jump With back this, to the wall and just slide right underneath it possession of our most valued treasure it all began when I was just a kid, bouncing on my father's knee. You see, I come from a long line of master thieves, all their secrets of sneaking and stealing in an ancient book. The Phoebus Raccoonus. <laughs> so, uh, essentially, I guess, while the cutscene's kind of playing in the background, this, uh, this category is, uh, essentially an all-levels kind of playthrough, save for a hacking level that we skip in the end of the game. Well, on the uh, night I was supposed to inherit the book, five visitors It's now a category because there's two major skips done in any percent that skip the entirety of the first two hub worlds. And because of this, it makes the category makes any percent about 20 minutes uh, faster than regular all keys, and a lot of individual level strats are skipped and not in case in any percent. So <laughs> this category is also a little bit easier to get to as the hub skips are fairly difficult. Broken alone, I was dumped at the town orphanage. So it was kind of just a, a nice all-around thing to finally get that. Work back there at police headquarters, Sly. Come see me if you want to check out any of your old movies. I've got them all here on my computer. Use the left analog stick to move around the hideout and the X button to select things. I've already. The road trip gave me the time I needed to study up on Sir Raleigh the Frog. As a young man, this hot-tempered frog grew bored of his life of luxury. Never understood this. Raleigh goes from whim, he tried being a super a fancy, piracy. super fancy a guy, and just gives all of it up to become a pirate. Who quickly became addicted to just on a whim. Just into the don't understand, man. Don't understand. Where his evil tinkering genius rose to new heights. The last reported sighting of this mad machinist was off the soggy coast of the Isle of Wrath. A small island uncomfortably situated in the middle of the perilous Welsh Triangle. <laughs> so this, uh, this first level here is stealthy approach, but only three of them are considered tricks. It's got three the tricks first one is, uh, well it's got four tricks. It's a weird, a weird glitch we call a catapult. It uh, works kind of the same thing as like a proxy. When you get Sly's character model stuck in between two corners, that uh, the game like can't handle that. So it launches him out at high speeds <laughs> in some parts. And then in other ones, for some reason, it only sends you back to your last ground location. Which is uh, a glitch we will be abusing at least uh, one time, you know, twice in this run. Called Super Jumping. Also, uh, this is the cutscene skip that I just messed up. Uh, for whatever reason, when you 
when you trigger a cutscene, <laughs> um, if the Binaki Com has been pulled up and opened, that's the trigger for it having been watched. So you can load the game, or in this case, die after the, the Binaki Com opens up, and the cutscene will have been saved as being watched without having to actually watch it. Uh, in optimal runs, missing that a few times is really bad, because each time you fail it is around 9 seconds. But because the cutscene is so long, it's worth it to at least keep trying it uh, up to 5 times, I believe. Because after you fail it the 6th time, you'll get a game over and have to, to go back to the start, so... <laughs> Which is extremely slow, you don't want to have to do that. Especially because the sign catapult can be kind of obnoxious. This is just a small time saver. Let's you skip a cycle, essentially. Nothing too big. And then after the uh, the cutscene of Beast was in Out of Bounds, the, uh, the level designers were very gracious to us speedrunners of this game, and allow for a lot of, uh, of neat Out of Bounds tricks and skips. As we will, uh, we'll be seeing a lot more in the later levels. There's not too many in these first levels because they're all enclosed in buildings. Um, that was a load warp, so each hub has a specific area that you load to when you load the game. So instead of doing this long platforming section where there's a cutscene where Bentley explains what we'll be doing, uh, we can just load the game and get straight to the, the hub warp part. Uh, you can also, as I said earlier, load the game to skip the cutscenes. However, you don't need to wait for the Binocicom to get pulled up for those, as the Binocicom will still get pulled up in the backdrop of the, uh, the load fade-out. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, Sly will latch onto and or like a jump to a different area that he can go to with the circle button, which is how you, you do your super sneaky thief moves, as Bentley explains it in the intro level in a cutscene that we skip. Uh, everything is done with uh, the circle button that's not just basic movement and attacking. And sometimes Sly's AI, not AI, but his, uh, his targeter gets a little wonky and he'll do things that you don't wish for him to do. And this is something that's really cool. It's often kind of glossed over when uh, people are running this game and like see runs of it is uh, while that's not the most difficult thing to do in time uh, consistently, it is extremely difficult to do perfectly. I didn't do it perfectly there on the second pipe, but the first pipe was fairly well. It was done fairly well. It's essentially a momentum storage, in a way, where Sly locks onto pipes, like when he locks onto things, he does so at a very quick speed. So you can cancel that animation and retain the speed. Uh, this is a fairly, it's not a recent find, but it's a recent implementation. Uh, for whatever reason, <sighs> dang it. For whatever reason, in various spots when you load in from a black screen like this, if Sly's model is on flat ground, you can mash the jump button, and he'll get launched super high really quickly. Also, this game has some, some fairly wonky hitboxes. Sometimes you'll, uh, you'll attempt to do something, and Sly will just have none of it. Also, in the level after this one, I'm gonna die at the start and game over just so I can reset on lives. Because <laughs> this is back when game devs were, were very mean, and if you die at a later point in the level, at any of the later checkpoints, if you game over, you still get sent all the way back to the start, which is very slow. There's not much to this level, just kind of blaze through it. 
get your cycles and whatnot. Uh, and I guess to explain these lasers, because again, we skip uh, we skip a lot of Bentley's dialogue. Because Bentley is, is slow at explaining things. Um, whenever these spotlights or the lasers on the ground are yellow, you trip them, and it sets off the little alarm things. And then when they're red, they deal damage to you. Uh, and I guess one other thing I haven't explained is when you break a vase, like you've seen in Stealthy Approach, a little animation plays. In every level, save for the first level in each hub, and certain levels with Murray, another playable character. You can skip these uh, by either breaking the vase and exiting level, loading the game, and then breaking the vase and the, uh, the fade out, and the game will auto-save over the file, and it will keep your progress for some reason. Or by doing that, breaking the vase and uh, view mapping out of the level. So we do that for every uh, key animation that we can. There's no reason to watch unnecessary things in our speedrun. We want to go fast. I like that level. It's got uh, it's got a little bit of everything, save for ex extreme like difficult execution. But this level will make up for that by being a little bit more boring, but have some precise movement. So as you see here, whenever you are on these little blue rugs, even if you're like in the air, um, the turrets will auto-target you and attempt to shoot you. However, if you make it to them quickly or quick enough, uh, they don't have enough time to ready and like aim at you to shoot you. And generally, like this is easiestly or this is done easiest by getting above them, as there is a certain height range that they cannot reach or by jumping to the left of them. <clears throat> we just kind of completely cut out 80% of that level, which is actually a really cool level. Where you like hide in the barrel to, to sneak around and whatnot. Also, uh, this is a extremely precise and difficult trick. So if I don't get it, Well, we saved it. Nice. Okay. That's one of the, the few things that uh, I was I was worried about. Um, basically, di almost directly outside of that pipe, there is a, a very long cutscene <coughs> that is... It's still faster to skip it and, like, re-unlock the... Uh, or to save the game and then come back over. However... It's still very, very slow. Missing that is like 30-ish seconds, 40 seconds, something like that. So getting that is a, is a huge relief for the early game. But essentially, uh, there's a tiny little spot that is essentially the exact size, if, if not just a little bit bigger, than Sly's character model right outside the pipe that the cutscene isn't in. Like, they, for, for some reason, they just didn't put it exactly on the edge of the pipe. So we can kind of abuse that by jumping out just far enough, and then turning around and immediately ledge-grabbing the top of the pipe. <clears throat> and then jumping over to the roof where the guard is. And here we have one of the notorious minigames of Sly 1. Uh, these minigames are the only true instance of RNG in the run. There are... There's one in this world, two in the next world... Excuse me, there's one in the next world, 
Then there's two after in the third world, and then I believe just one in the fourth world that we effectively skip. I'm counting the races as RNG because the boost spawns aren't uh, aren't set, and the pathing of the the other racers are aren't set either. Uh, this minigame in particular is very, very mean, and is often a run killer, as for some reason, these crabs and the treasure chests that we're breaking have really awful hitboxes. <coughs> so sometimes you'll, you'll shoot enough times and it just will not break the chest, and then sometimes a crab will just snipe it out of the, the way and take it, <coughs> and if the crab takes the chest, you fail and have to start over. But at least you don't lose a life, so that's good. And now we're going to uh, to the first boss fight. This is Raleigh. Uh, his boss fight's kind of kind of generic and typical of the time. Uh, we reset the game here uh, at the start of the cutscene because again, when the auto save pops up on the left and any cutscene starts except for the animated cutscenes, you can reset the game and it will count as having been watched. So when we load in, we'll load into the actual boss fight. Uh, this is doable on all versions of the game. So the PS2 copy, or the, uh, the PS2 disc in all of the, the regions, uh, playing it on... Yeah, bleh, sorry, and on the remaster as well. You can skip these first intro cutscenes by resetting the game. It's only faster to do it on all of them if you're playing on a backwards compatible PlayStation 3, which is the fastest version of this, uh, the fastest way to play this game. And the remaster, the PS2 disc version, PS2s don't reset fast enough, so it's not, uh, the console itself, rather, doesn't reset fast enough, so you can only skip three of these intro bosses and save time. But as you can see, Raleigh's pretty generic, doesn't really do too much, just jumps around. Normal three to four times, or five times each. And then you whack him four times, and that's, that's about it. Well, we do have a, uh, a cool way of skipping this boss fight in particular. So at the end of each cutscene, or at the end of each boss a cutscene plays, after you get the last hit, Normally we load the game and then get the final hit on the bosses, skip the cutscene, because there's not enough time to pause the game while doing the last hit. However, Raleigh's final hit, for some reason, has extended amounts of time that you can uh, pause for. It's another like half a second to a second that you get additional. So it's a lot easier to do that, and it's quicker because loading the game uh, takes a few seconds. Then you have to menu, and it's just a bunch of nonsense when you can just hit him and immediately go into the menu. And to kind of put it into perspective, um, that wasn't a fantastic world one. It could have been a little bit better, but the any percent run or the any percent category for this game would already be done with the first level and actually would be done with the second level even of the third world. That's how much time save the first two hubs skip or the first two hubs skip saves. This episode, this, uh, this episode introduces and has all of the doggos. Got Mugshot, the the gangster dog, or mugshot, and his gangster dogs, rather. Love these cutscenes. Even to this day, there's many runs. I, I still, I still love them. Um, this first level for World 2 is called the Rocky Start. Um, there's a cutscene that plays if you climb this pipe, so we can just do uh, a kind of 3D jump around 
where we're supposed to go. Because they didn't uh, extend the, the like fall plane or whatever. And then here, this is a cutscene skip as well. So again, just like the one in a stealthy approach, um, dying isn't the only way you can skip these cutscenes. Taking damage after activating them skips them as well. So that's why we uh, want to retain at least one charm after hub one. So we can walk through that cutscene and uh, the cutscene trigger and take damage in the water. It saves about 20 seconds. Um, a recurring theme that you're, you're going to be hearing me explain a lot is uh, skipping cutscenes. There's so many explanations in this game that it's just... They're so slow. Bentley talks so, so very, very slow. So it's almost faster to skip all of his cutscenes, and I believe actually we do skip all of the cutscenes we are allowed to skip in the run. Provided that you actually succeed in doing the skip. after this level we're gonna do another load warp uh, we do this in all for all three or for all four of the hubs or all three of the hub or three of the four rather uh, provided we can do a skip at the end of the opening level for world four uh, if we can't do that then we do do it for all four levels because it's faster than doing the platforming and here we have our first of two rail shooters in the run Essentially, because uh, I'm going to skip the cutscene, <coughs> Murray has found a key, and he wants to make a run for it, as he says, and it's our job, as his friend, to protect him. He's not quite the, uh, for lack of a better term, the BA that he is in Sly 2, 3, and 4 to an extent. Um, all of these guard spawns are the same every time. So after a few run-throughs, um, uh, you begin to learn and memorize where they spawn at so you can start pre-firing them. And for the most part, these walls are shoot-throughable. So you can kind of wall-bang the, the guards as well. If you've played any FPSs, you'll, you'll know what the term wall-bang means. It's essentially... Uh, shooting through walls and whatnot to give a, a broad explanation of it and we uh we do this and like pre-fire them and make sure that we kill them as quickly as possible because each time murray gets like spotted he gets spooked and does that right there he'll like he'll get scared and either stop for half a second depending on how long you wait to kill the guard or will like start to run away if you wait too long. <clears throat> uh, that was another key animation skip. Uh, as I said earlier, the majority of Murray's levels, we can't skip them. Um, the rail shooters are actually the only instance of this, except for you know, the, two, the two rail shooters and then the race in World 4. We can skip the key animations. However, it's only faster to do it in this level and the race. Well, it's not that it's not only faster, it's just extremely difficult in the other rail shooter. So instead, we uh, we just don't do it. Also, this level is very well designed. So we can just kind of skip half the level like that. For whatever reason, they didn't extend the, uh, the damage plane as, as usual. So you can just kind of jump down there by hugging that wall and avoid having to go through the first third of the level, I would say. And then, once again, right here, they don't extend these, these planes out or make these things not walk onable. So we can just abuse that to skip large portions of the levels. That jump is, uh, it, it doesn't look very difficult watching it, but it requires a, a very high level of finesse and understanding of Sly's movement to be able to do it properly every time. 
because in this game, Sly's, uh, Sly's double jump isn't the same double jump, it isn't like the, the normal double jump that you would expect in a, in a game. He doesn't automatically like gain extra height for a double jump. If you wait too long, he'll just extend his jump's length. So you have to do your second jump input fairly quickly. Otherwise, he'll uh, he'll miss it or not gain enough height rather to make it. And then you have to kind of do what's called a curl jump, where you move your left stick while in the air in a very like not not so much precise angle, but in a, you know without letting go of it essentially to make sure you can get around the invisible wall and ledge grab the slot machine. In, uh, in the Binocicom cutscenes, you can you can mess around using the uh, left and right control sticks with the, the heads of the characters that are involved in the cutscene, so you can make him do weird stuff. I don't know, I guess they added it in because they knew how long and obnoxious the cutscenes were, so they wanted you to have something fun to do. <laughs> so this is the first race level. Um, it is deceptively easy to lose this, especially when things like that happen, that don't normally happen. Normally on this first lap, the uh, the red vehicle with the, the mariachi band in the background, uh, normally he's already in first and has a, a decent lead, but for whatever reason, um, the game's AI had him like wreck and cause the two cards behind him to kind of pile up with him. Which uh, made it so when I went to make the turn, they kind of sped up to get back to where they were kind of supposed to be at, like the general spot. And it kind of pushed me out of the way so I couldn't get uh, the one boost but, uh, like before they did. The boosts are pretty self-explanatory. You hit the, the little red thing, Press the square button and you you go a little bit faster for a few seconds. Typical uh, typical fanfare, I guess. Not 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 so much fanfare, but pretty pretty standard for race style things back in in this era of game design. Which to point out, I guess since I haven't, this game came out in two thousand two. Good old early two thousands platformers, gotta love them. That amazing uh, early thousands cartoony charm. Way to go, Murray. So to, to kind of give an, ex an explanation as to why we can't skip this, um, during this whole time that after you complete the final lap, that entire time that Murray is, that, like the, the black bars kind of come at the top and bottom of the screen, um, that's a scripted event. So you have to put, you can't put any inputs in during scripted events. You have to do them beforehand. So the drive to the key takes too long for the game to be able to, for you to be able to pause and load beforehand. So you would just effectively end up loading the the, the race at the start again. <laughs> also, this is another catapult, much like the sign. Uh, so it's a little bit more consistent once you've figured it out, because there's actually a there's a proper setup in a way for the sign, but it's it's, it's really finicky still. Uh, this one's a lot easier to find a setup for. However, the setups are very they're they're very runner to runner. You'll you'll generally speaking not find the the same exact setup for that catapult between runners. Also, this is a super jump. It's the first time you see it in this run. Uh, essentially, the game remembers Sly's last ground position, so where he was last walking, or if he was latched onto a pipe, his last pipe position and whatnot. I need to stop trying to split. <laughs> I don't know. Alright, we're good. I, I died earlier. Um, 
but I remember Sly's last ground position. So you can do this series of things that we call super jumping. The jump back from the ending point to the start point itself isn't what's technically called super jumping, it's the whole package. But uh, when Sly lands on the ground from a jump, if you either you can time it perfectly normally without having to, to do something to make it easier, um, you can do it like that. However, it's a lot easier to swing your cane before you land. And what this does is it, it puts Sly in that kind of swinging animation where he has to finish the swing before he's technically considered on the ground again. So it gives you another second-ish to jump. And if you manage to do this perfectly and chain them, you can go throughout uh, a level and go to any point, rather. Or go to any point in the level. And if you have a charm or one of the two pages you get in 100% to not take damage from water or fall damage, you'll get launched back to your in your starting point well, while uh, having no collision. So you'll go through any object that would normally be considered static and solid. You'll just phase right through them, which we'll see uh, after, not this level, but after the next level. We'll see this utilized. This pull can be kind of finicky sometimes when you grab it the first time. Sly will just whiff for no real reason and plummet to his uh, his untimely device. Which is really bad if you don't have a charm. Luckily they give you a charm right at the start. And this is, uh, this is a really wonky skip. Uh, it skips a very large portion of this ending level where we get not, not so much chased but shot at by Carmelita. Basically everything you see below me you're supposed to do normally while getting shot at. However, the... Uh, I guess the circle input like hitbox to latch onto that ladder is just long enough that if you do that jump uh, perfectly from the top of that chandelier and time it correctly, you can still launch on. You can latch onto it, effectively skipping all of that bottom section. Which I think is pretty cool. It's a little wonky, but. This game itself is a little wonky and wacky, so we're accepting of that. Uh, this level has two, well, one like major kind of like sequence break, and then it has a, a few minor sequence breaks that look pretty cool. This is probably one of my more favorite levels to watch be done in this category, and it's certainly one of the most satisfying to do correctly. Although I messed that up. So normally there's a there's a part with a bunch of like stone statue dogs where you pretend to be Batman effectively and do your best uh, gargoyle statue impression and jump around on them and then a section where you go through some spotlights and whatnot and then there's that little section right there if you press uh, there's a few ways to do it if you but I do it and I find it easiest to be pressing X and square at the same time um, almost similar to what you would do for a super jump. However, instead of pressing square like a second early, you press them at the exact same time. And for whatever reason, this allows you to keep control of Sly and his momentum. So you can uh, just jump straight from the second air conditioning unit over to the thing instead of having to fall down all the way and climb back up the intended way. And that was the, uh, the second instance of super jumping that I was referring to. I'm fairly certain it's not used anymore in the run, save for an optional thing that I'll do if I go for a charm, so I can have a, a safety safety net, so to speak, for the end game. Because the end game in, in Sly is is fairly difficult. There's an auto scroller that doesn't uh, that doesn't like to play nice. It's like three and a half minutes long. Oh, three minutes long. Well, I guess it's only two and a half. There's a there's a cutscene that also works into it being three minutes, but it doesn't like to play nice. And then you have a very difficult level 
as well in the end game, and then you have two very difficult skips that can both cause you to take damage that are done <laughs> in the the fourth to last level, and then the exact last level in the final boss fight, which is gonna be uh, gonna be pretty hype. Oh dang it! <clears throat> I tried to double jump, but I pressed square before. That's kind of a silly death. I messed up and missed the the second mirror, so I had to go back for him. And when I had to go back for him, uh, mugshot the boss. His pathing was different than what I'm used to. I didn't react to it fast enough. So that's kind of a, a costly costly mistake, unfortunately. However, aside from not getting uh, the second Boneyard Casino skip first try, it's the only mistake that's actually been made in World 2. It's very costly, but still, only making one major mistake is is actually really cool, given how, how bad World 1 kind of went. Um, so that jump is also very difficult and a <clears throat> uh, fairly precise curl jump where you jump around the hitbox of the mirror and land on the chandelier because for whatever reason they, I guess they never expected someone to try to jump up there so you can stand up there and effectively walk around and hit all the mirrors in one cycle of mugshot shooting. You normally had to do a bunch of spire jumps and waste a whole bunch of time waiting for mugshot to shoot them or to, to not shoot them and turn them back around. And it's just overall really slow and boring, so... Instead of doing all that, we... We performed that difficult jump. And just, uh... Skip all that nonsense. Chief Mystic for the Fiendish Five, her powers allowed them to break both the laws of man and nature at the same time. Yet despite the whirlwind success of her youth, she managed to slip into Also, uh, again, to, just to kind of put into perspective, because I, I think it's I think it's really cool when uh, when people kind of explain these kind of things when I when I watch speedruns. Um, the the shorter category for this, uh, in any percent, uh, at 37 minutes is generally halfway through World Four, and we're just now starting World Three. So I, I don't know why little small things like that make me so happy, but I enjoy little small information like that. Uh, there is a very difficult jump you can do here that's effectively a blind jump into a near per uh, near per yeah, pixel perfect jump, sorry. Um, is at the start there. You jump down from the vine by that waterfall and land on a rock. However, the camera changes midway through the jump. So you can only do, you do one jump, wait for the camera to change, and then do your second jump. Give it about a second to react, to aim properly. Uh, it saves 15 seconds, so it is very worth it to, uh, I, I don't personally think it's very worth it to go for it, but if you can get it practiced down enough, um, it's certainly, I mean, for any percent, it's it's definitely worthwhile because the run is so very optimized already. Uh, that strat was often considered non-RTA uh, viable, so what we're doing right now is considered an RTA run, where you start the timer and you don't stop it until the end of the run. Uh, it was considered RTA unviable for seven plus years of, of running this game, and only just recently got added into the, the route. I've tried learning it personally, and have attempted it a few times. I generally only attempt it if a run kind of needs saving in a way. But that's just my philosophy on it. Now this level's really cool because uh, if you played this game as a child, you probably remember a big scary snack. <laughs> and yes, I said snack. Uh, I probably remember that how terrifying it was, and how awful that chase sequence is, trying to collect the, the bottles. Well, provided you don't want the bottles at the very least, uh, if you follow this, and it, it's it's fairly difficult to, to follow this, I would imagine, but you know, give, give it a few tries, you'll, you'll, you'll get it down eventually. 
you uh you don't see the snake. You just kind of go out of bounds and walk on the wall, and yeah, it's it's done. <laughs> Skip basically the entire level. Uh, and now we're getting to the second, um, well, I guess it's the third, like, technical minigame, because I, I consider the race a minigame, even though it's not realistically a minigame. Uh, this one is often, it's not a run killer, however, it can uh, cause you to lose a lot of time. And I say it's not a run killer, um, per se, because nobody has an optimized enough time right now, save for the current world record holder, to actually need to reset to losing um, a lot of time on this minigame. <clears throat> because the rest of the run is so optimized for any percent, um, you can generally make up large time losses. You don't make up the time losses, but you don't have to, uh, they're not as heavy in the minigames so much so as they are, yeah, so much so as they are in the platforming sections. Because if you play the platform sections perfectly, you generally won't lose any time. Uh, that was alright. Uh, normally what you want is you want about, uh, for an average time there, in-game time, in the in-game, like, mini-game timer, you want generally above a 50, and I believe we had a 55, so that's it's pretty solid, pretty average. Um, the best that I've ever seen was, I believe, a 108 on the in-game timer which means it only took 52 seconds to do the minigame itself, which is really good. Uh, this level has, in my opinion, the most inconsistent trick in the game. For whatever reason, I don't know if it's something that I'm just doing incorrectly, um, I can never get this first try. It, it takes me, it generally takes me a few attempts and sometimes we'll kill runs. Uh, <laughs> coolly enough, we actually got a second try, which is really solid. Uh, generally speaking, about four or five, four or five times is is average-ish. You know, is is okay for that that level. Um, anything beyond four or five times is just too slow, and I can't take it like as a run, so I have to... I, I generally keep it, though, just because I don't... I'm not the biggest proponent of, uh... the biggest, like, fan of resetting a run that isn't already, like, dead. Unless I'm, I'm not in the greatest of moods, but... I'm actually very happy with that. Uh, this section I'll explain after... well, I guess since I... I didn't get it, uh, there's a, there's a trick there called Bone Jump where we do a momentum storage like we did in Into the Machine. And I messed that up too. Um, to bounce off of the bone, essentially, and jump over the spikes that were there. And if you do it correctly, you can uh, jump directly onto the safe and then do the second part of that skip that I did, where you jump on the like supporting beam of the above rafters. before the uh, the guard that's on that like tiny little section spots you, which is generally you know, what you want to do, that's the, the fastest. Um, but I goofed it up, but it's, it's, it's fine, you can just damage abuse up there anyway. Um, it's what I generally tell people to do, is to go for it, and then if you don't get it, it's fine, just damage abuse up there. It doesn't lose too much time. Uh, the only downside is that you lose the charm, obviously which is a bigger proponent in any percent than it is in all keys. Because, uh, I guess that one, one mechanic I, I have yet to explain is after you collect 100 coins, uh, you get what's called a Lucky Charm, and a Lucky Charm is effectively uh, 
an extra hit, kind of like an Aku Aku Mask is in Crash Bandicoot. Uh, you can get two of them, so you can get a Silver Charm like I have right now, which is one extra hit, and then a Gold one, which is two extra hits. And then after that, uh, each 100 coins you get while you have a Gold Charm on your back is an extra life. And because we do more levels in all keys than we do in any percent, um, depending on how well you perform, you'll generally get two to three uh, extra charms from coins. Do you see we have 11 coins now? We'll get one more in the run. I, we should get one more in the run, depending on how many coins I collect. I like, go out of my way to collect. I might actually do that. Try to, to farm up some coins in this level. Spend a second or two, making sure I can collect some. <clears throat> well, no. Our coin count's so low, I would have to sit here and actually like straight up grind grind for the coins. So I think I'm just gonna go out of my way and get a uh, an extra charm that kind of just sits in, in one of the levels in World 4. That's not too far out of the way, it's probably eight seconds out of the way. Because it's always nice to have the charm for the end game, like I said, it's very unforgiving. And the last thing you want to do is go for a jump in the final boss that saves a fairly relevant amount of time and then not make it and have to do the entire boss fight over again. Or get one of the, uh, the infamous glitches in the second phase of the boss fight where the boss's attack after you dodges it, after you dodge it rather, uh, can come back from off screen and damage you. Because that's that's always a good time in your, your final boss fight. Dodging his attack and having it come back and kill you. Uh, you can load the game to skip that charm as well. Uh, you can pause on the frame that you like trigger the cutscene for Sly jumping off of the little like vehicle he's on. And if you have his angle correctly, Sly will jump off and have just enough time to run back to the key, or if you get lucky and you get like super precise with, with your angle, he'll jump off and instantly collect the key, so you don't have to worry about it. It doesn't save any more time him collecting the key earlier, but it's just a, a nice like little reprieve, or not, not reprieve, but a, a you know, a relief rather, to know that you don't have to, to worry about losing your run. I only ever go for it if I'm, if I'm in a bad run, and not only am I in a bad run, but I also lost my charm. <clears throat> because, uh... We need a charm in the, the level, the first level of the next hub world to perform a skip called Lameke Jump, which, uh... saves about 10-15 seconds. I, I, I generally think it's, uh, it's closer to 10 maybe 12, depending on which console you're on. <clears throat> also, that was a really nice chickens. I didn't actually, I, didn't, I wasn't mentioning anything, but uh, you, have to, you have to kill 50 chickens to, uh, to make gumbo, or so the ghost can make gumbo. Don't really know why the, the ghost wants to make gumbo, but hey, you know. He's letting me live my life, I'm gonna let him live his. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, you have to kill the 50 chickens and he gives you the key. Uh, we had 35 seconds left on the in-game timer, which is really solid. It means we took less than a minute to complete it. So, you know, that's really good. Average, I would say, is about 30 left on the in-game timer, so we were slightly above average. I believe the the best that I've ever had was... 38, 39. So, really close to my best. Uh, this is the third boss fight. This is Ms. Ruby. Um, right away, we're going to be getting into not intense movement, but precise movement to skip a bunch of these cycles, or to get a bunch of one cycles. And then we're going to do an Out of Bounds here, that I'll explain afterwards. The Out of Bounds itself is pretty ex explanatory, like self-explanatory. 
but the reason why we do it uh, isn't, so. Alright, so what I did was, for whatever reason, uh, the only trigger to spawn you in the second phase of this boss fight, uh, <clears throat> or not, not the only trigger, so normally when you hit her, uh, she'll warp over here and there's a long cutscene where she explains this DDR minigame, essentially. But for whatever reason, this water that we're currently swimming over, riding, or that we're riding on this turtle to kind of to skip over, uh, this entire water section is uh, has a trigger in it. It says if Sly has touched this water or died in it, to spawn him at the start of the second boss, the second phase. For some reason, so we do that. We perform that out of bounds to jump out and over and land in the water. Uh, damage abuse to get rid of the charm, which sets our spawn point, and then we just die quickly and we respawn in the second uh, second phase. And when she, when like you respawn in, her health is still set at two, or is still set at three instead of four, so you don't actually have to hit her, you know, an extra time. Uh, at the end here, we're going to be skipping the fourth phase of her boss fight by loading the game, and then during the, the fade out of the load, we're going to hit her twice, because for whatever reason her hitbox in this specific phase lingers a little bit after you hit her the first time, so you can get in two hits. And as I explained earlier with uh, like saving and whatnot, <coughs> um, and I guess I didn't go too in detail, but uh, effectively, whenever you load a file, anything that you do that auto that would auto save onto that file gets auto saved onto the state. So like I loaded the file and then proceeded to uh, to hit Ms. Ruby twice more to kill her, and then the game auto saved. And what that did is it saved over the state that I was already loading, but instead of like glitching the game out. For whatever reason, it just loads that new autosaved state. I assume this is because the state isn't loaded upon, like, it, it's weird because if you load a state that has a charm, it will give you that charm instantly, and you can, like, lose that charm if you take damage in the fade out. You, like, you'll respawn without the charm, you have to reload the game again. But when he tried to offer However, to the nobleman, certain things, I guess, don't save until the the fade-out has completed and it starts to fade back in. So, I assume it like loads specifics of Sly's state first, and then loads the world state and the fade-out. Of course, this is kind of just baseless. I don't actually know. I'm not a programmer. But that seems to make the most sense to me, is that general concept. And you can do that for anything, like, uh, <laughs> you'll see me in a litter level in this, this world, because I'm gonna go out of my way to collect the charm. Uh, you'll see me later on in this level load the game to get back my charm that I lost earlier in the level. Uh, break the, the key vase. And then it will save me having collected the key, and will have given me the charm back. And skipped the key animation all in, all in one. It's really cool the uh, the kind of stuff you can do by just abusing the game's like wonky load mechanics. <laughs> uh, there's a cutscene below me to my left, and you can actually get that trigger by getting too close to it up here. But uh, it's fairly long, and uh, I'm I'm kind of a terrible person, so I'll explain it. Uh, essentially, the Panda King is, as Sly explains in the cutscene that we won't be watching. A homicidal pyromaniac, and he effectively launched fireworks at the mountain to cause an avalanche to bury uh, to bury a city because they didn't they didn't pay his uh, his protection fees. Essentially, it's kind of using them as an example, which you know is kind of rude <laughs> to be honest. But you know, I mean he's he is the bad guy after all. He has to do some bad guy things. Otherwise, he uh, he wouldn't be a bad guy, you know. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, this is a really cool sequence break. Normally you have to do a bunch of like, like you know, sneaky thief stuff and avoid some some guard cycles and come up here normally. However, you can just uh, you can do what's called a slope jump, which is if you jump up against a slope, like up against the wall or whatever, for some reason it's like it's extra height on both of his jumps, or his first jump rather, and then a little bit of extra height on his second jump. Uh, you can use that to, to kind of fly up and hit the fireworks the unintended way. Also, I, I completely forgot that this was considered a super jump, so uh, you stand in that corner, do the, the super jumps around to that wall, and then uh, take damage and you fly through the building that the load trigger is in, and you hit the low trigger much like we do for uh, skipping into Mugshot's boss fight early. It's not really early in this game because we technically got all the keys. However, it's still faster than unlocking the level the intended way. <clears throat> also, uh, that's faster because it skips the key animation. It skips uh, walking back to the, the door from the key. And then we get to view maps straight away to that, uh, that area. Normally when you would exit, or enter, rather, from Perilous Ascent, you would have to load warp. So it just, uh, it takes out extra load, some extra walking in the, the key animation. Also, much like the first rail shooter, all of these spawns are set. So if you have them memorized, you can pre-fire all of the guards. Some of them are uh, a little bit more difficult than the other ones. And for whatever reason, the, the hitboxes on some of these seem a little bit more inconsistent. Probably because there's a little bit more going on in this level. Design-wise. So it's always good to focus on the sound cue, which is why you're hearing me break in my dialogue uh, when I'm waiting to, to hear if I shot an enemy correctly. Because the sound cue plays whenever you deal damage to something, or kill a guard. <clears throat> so I'm waiting to hear that before I move on. Instead of waiting for the visual input, like I do in the second area. <clears throat> uh, these guards are another instance of RNG, essentially. Um, there's six spots that they can spawn. Uh, the four like little doorways and then either side of the roof. Uh, we have, we want and prefer them to spawn in the two bottom closest, which we haven't yet we have, we have yet to get a spawn of. Um, and then the the roof is the the worst spawn. However, the RNG here isn't isn't killer, and it doesn't lose you nearly as much time as it does in fish if you get really awful RNG in fish. Bad RNG here maybe loses two or three seconds at, at most. The majority of your time loss here is gonna be to uh to not sniping the guards effectively. Uh this is well, I'm gonna see if I can get a fast guard cycle here. Um we did not, which is unfortunate. <clears throat> For whatever reason, that, that hook's hitbox is is like it's extended very very much further than a lot of the other ones so you can get uh, some extra speed from it and kind of land halfway on that bridge where that guard cycle is so if you have a good guard cycle uh, you can save a few seconds also this is this is fairly difficult this level is fairly difficult it's probably one of the more execution intensive levels in the run, and is in my opinion the best level in the run, because it's just non-stop execution from start to finish, and I love that in speedruns. <clears throat> if I could take out the minigames in this run and put in levels that were just as difficult as Unseen Foe and like Sinking Peril, I wouldn't a heartbeat. But there's a, there's like a lot of these tricks, there's um, the, the first bridge skip, first like guard tower skip, you can do it just like that where you don't line it up. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to line up that one because of the weird camera angle, so I generally don't do that, and I only skip that one fast. But uh, a lot of the stuff kind of goes by really quickly in that level, 
you turn uh, a normally fairly long level. There's a lot of waiting on guard cycles and using Sly's invisibility move, which we got from defeating Ruby, which lets him stand still and go invisible and he can't be seen by guards and spotlights and whatnot, into a, a minute and 30 second long level, if done perfectly. This level is also another really cool level. World 4 has some... has... has <clears throat> aside from King of the Hill, three really solid levels back to back to back. However, after this level we have what is widely considered by essentially everyone that watches speedruns of this game, and certainly by everyone that speedruns this game, the worst trick in Sly Cooper. It's done in all three categories, unfortunately, so you can't escape it anywhere. <laughs> and uh, it's called spinning, and we'll, we'll kinda, we'll get into that uh, when we get there. Uh, we still have a little bit of execution left in this level. <laughs> Movement optimizations, as I mess them up. Uh, understanding of physics, when you can and can't press the circle button and double jump and all that. Stuff that's extremely difficult to, to kind of explain. So it's just kind of easy to just watch it. Um, so here, <laughs> those fireworks over there. Normally you're supposed to unlock them, hit them, and then it unlocks this area. However, if I didn't mess up, I got a ledge grab for some reason. Normally I don't get that ledge grab. I'll do this again. Normally that's how it's supposed to go, and you can get up here, and you can kind of like walk on this extended hitbox, and skip all that and walk to the second part of this hub, and then skip uh, the animation for unlocking this door and whatnot. Just get straight to the level. And yeah, here is... Here is spinning. Uh, so, <clears throat> oh man, that is all right. I didn't, I didn't want to uh, to to kind of curse and during during this run, but that was. Yeah, I'm I'm not gonna do it. That was amazing though. That was awesome. That's nearly as perfect as it can get. Uh, so effectively, the uh, the legend, I guess, the legend in quotes. Uh, for this trick and how it was found was uh, Runner was doing this level like normal and he died and lost his run and he was was kind of kind of upset you know you, you never want to lose your run especially in a level like like this and when he respawned he kind of just started spinning around in uh, in rage <laughs> I guess and popped out of that corner and was able to uh, to walk or to, to fly over to the thing. Also, there's a there's a cutscene on the like entire almost the entirety of that area that I was trying to skip. Also, I'm gonna abuse super jumping here. Get the charm. Save after ch the charm gets on slides back, which um, see it like so. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll explain that part in a second. Um, but save so the charm is guaranteed set on slides back and then take the damage to get warped back up so I don't have to, to do the platforming and effectively grab a charm that's like about seven seconds out of the way and, and only three um, <clears throat> and for this game whenever you do like anything you do in a level like collecting a charm through like coins or picking one up or bottles you can save at any point during a level and if you reload the level after that point all of that progress will be saved however you'll be sent back to the start of the world um, that is a skip to like there's there's an entire part of the section that we're skipping where again where Carmelita like chases us around and whatnot. And we can jump on that vault, and not that vault, but that safe, and jump up and hit that checkpoint that you see me spawn next to. Uh, and <clears throat> hitting the checkpoints uh, triggers them to, to save your state, just like uh, walking into their range would normally. So you can get to skip the thing. But now you'll see when I collect this key, I'm going to load the game beforehand, and I'll have the charm back, despite not entering the level with it. <clears throat> also, we didn't get uh, the soft lock here. Carmelita, uh, with her random shots, can hit the fireworks and cause them to explode prematurely, which means that you can't uh, finish the level. So we load the game, get the charm back, collect the key, skip the animation, and then just exit the level. <laughs> and 
And we only get the charm back because I saved after I collected it. And now we have, uh, we have a very... I don't want to say it's very difficult, it's just it's just annoyingly precise, this trick, and finicky. Uh, it's called Race Skip. So you might remember way back uh, in World 2 we had to do the race like normal, which was quite obnoxious and very long, and this race is even more obnoxious and even longer. However, uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, I can't remember who found it off the top of my head. That's bad, I should know this. But about a year and a half ago, someone found a way to skip this race um, by abusing the slope mechanics and the boost. So hopefully we can, uh, we can get it relatively quickly. Ah, oh, so close. <laughs> there's, a, there's a fairly small portion above this fence right right there second try nice um, where there's just an emptiness in the hitbox for some reason and you can kind of ramp up off of the wall and just fly over it casually it's pretty cool Now we're, uh, we're coming up on the the fourth the fourth boss of five. This is called Panda King. Or this guy is uh, his name is Panda King. And just like normal, this is uh, the last time that we'll actually do this. It's the last time we'll restart the game to skip a cutscene because the final boss we can just load the game to skip his cutscene because it's not it doesn't play a scripted animation or whatever. Like it's not scripted. It's just it's there. And there's a little bit before it that isn't scripted, so we can pause the game and load. <clears throat> but, uh, Panda King has... He, uh, he considers us worthy of his new technique called Flame Fu. And uh, he's going to utilize it to uh, attempt to beat us up. Uh, he has three attacks. Uh, the first one, as you see in there, is called Fiery Wheel. He does a he basically does a spin attack. You just jump to avoid it. And then this is Palms of Thunder. You just stand there and wail on him. And then the third attack is Booming Chop. <laughs> just run to the right and avoid it. Also, you'll see me mash. You'll see me falling a lot quicker than you probably remember if you played this game as a kid. Uh, if you mash the circle button, Sly will uh, like home in on these little spots that you would normally hide under to like dodge the fireballs the normal way. I'm gonna be safe here and just jump over him. And again, load the game, get the last two hits, skip the cutscene. Cool stuff. And now we are on to the final world. Okay, partner. We were on our way to the Krakarov volcano in Russia. While looking over what little information I had on the final member of the Fiendish Five, I began to notice something. In the four parts of the previous raccoonus recovered so far, several of the pictures depict a shadowy owl-like figure, which looks very similar to the police images of the mysterious clockwork. Is this a strange coincidence? It's totally a strange coincidence, Sly. You're not missing anything, man. It's just a, it's just a strange coincidence, dude. You know, sightings of a giant robotic owl who has this, like, Fortress of Fear-esque thing. It's totally not Clockwork Man. Um, <clears throat> so now that uh, <laughs> now that we've made it past all the cutscenes, uh, I feel safe enough to explain this. Uh, any of those animated cutscenes can just crash. At any point during the cutscene, it can just crash, and you have to re like hard reset your game. So uh, it's really cool <laughs> that that didn't happen. <laughs> And is very obnoxious when it happens and runs, and is uh, it's quite the way to lose your run. So, luckily enough, uh, none of the cutscenes <coughs> did that. So we're, we're we're all good. We're in the clear. Although we can still soft lock. Uh, there's still two more soft locks in the game. <laughs> So, you know, that could always happen still.
Also, a uh, Star Wars reference there if you if you caught it. It's subtle and isn't uh, the exact line that's used in the movie. However, it's it's still there. It's still a reference. Also, this is the auto scroller that I was talking about that can be uh, that can be uncooperative sometimes. The hitboxes on those owls isn't isn't the best. So. Also, it's a kind of it's kind of a neat glitch that you can do here. Uh, if you enter the view map screen, which you can get to by pressing select or pausing the game and going to view map, you can despawn the targeting reticule <laughs> and just kind of have to go based off a of sight. So I'm gonna be a little bit quiet here. As this part is very very stressful, we're already getting dive bombed by one. Nice, dude. Got through. Got through the last section while getting dive bombed once. Really happy about that. <laughs> now here, <laughs> yeah, there's no end. There's no end for the disdain I have for the end of this game. Here we have uh, what I consider to be the worst mini game in, in in the run, even in all keys, where we have to do that crab mini game in the first world. Uh, this minigame is extremely heavily dependent on RNG and your own pathing, and the slugs pathing. Uh, these slugs, whenever you hit them, there's only four that spawn in the world. Like there's only four, and they're always active. And whenever you hit them out of the out of the, the world, or out of, out of the world, out of the arena, they take the quickest path back possible. So like, you can see that there's the two little like entrances on either side uh, of the arena. They'll, they'll path to whichever one is fastest for them to get up and back onto here. And these computer spawns are all RNG. Uh, for whatever reason, we're supposed to collect 60 of them to like get hacking code and whatnot, or I, I don't know. Family is this master hacker that knows, that knows and can see all, and is apparently uh, omniscient and whatnot. But uh, I don't think omniscient is the correct word, but. Uh, yeah, he he can't he can't just figure out this code for himself. He needs us to break these computers, so we can't really tell him no. Um, I don't have. Normally, I gauge how well this went off of my segment timer, but since I don't have a segment timer here, I can't tell you if that was good or not. Because like there are times where the uh, the slugs can get like. Uh, you know, 50 computers, right? And if you got good enough spawns and ended close enough to this door, you can still have a very good time. So, I can't really, since there's no in-game timer, I can't really precisely tell you if that was good or bad. It felt okay, though. And here, this is widely considered the hardest trick in the, the run. So, <laughs> super sneaky thief moves, slide and jump to what I wanted him to jump to. So, I'm going to, uh, to load the game to get my charm back, because I went out of the way to get it, I want to keep it. Uh, this is called Bentley Skip, and effectively what it does is it skips a minigame with Bentley, where we hack to, uh, to free Sly, who gets trapped in here during a cutscene that we're going to be skipping. Damn it, oh, that sucks, dude. Sometimes you can get, like, you'll get launches that you just, you can't have no control over, and you can't stop yourself in time. Um, so that, that kind of sucks, but effectively what we're doing is we're trying to get proxied off of this turret in such a way that we can land on this little, like, either land on this lamp thing, like lamp-esque thing that's above Carmelita, and jump around and over the cutscene trigger, or that launch that we just got. Uh, if you get it a specific way, you can kind of bounce off of the wall and skip it that way. Also, you can you can just view map out of levels to not have to, to do them and like go to do other levels. So it's actually faster um, because that hacking minigame takes so long and is so difficult. It's faster to just sit here and do this. And constantly do it over and over and over again until you get the skip. Which we got second try after. So that's cool. I would have liked to have gotten a first try. It, it kind of sucks that I didn't, to be honest. 
because this run was like this run is really really good. Like, it's not like it's not perfect, but it was it was really solid up to that point. Well, not really solid up to that point, but it had potential to sub 120. Um, which right now the top three times on the leaderboards are all sub 120. So uh, it could have been up there. It could have even potentially been sub third place. However, the times aren't super optimized, but because this cat this category is uh, it's kind of hard to do perfectly the entire way because you do so many levels in a row that it's all execution all the time. So it's very easy to thumbs up. However, this had sub 120 potential. I uh, don't believe it does anymore. Although this is Sinking Peril, which is the second to last level in the game. So I'll end this at 116... 116.10? So actually, no, this, this can still sub 1, actually. This might actually still be able to get third on the leaderboards. Which would be really sick. I wonder if, up to that point, if I had potential to, uh, to take first, even with this run, given how many mistakes I had made. Because watching that cutscene and having to view map and try it again and whatnot is like 35-40 seconds. I doubt I did, but uh, I can explain that easier when I see what time I enter clockwork the final boss in. Little optimization, skipping the last spire point. Only saves about a second, but it's easy to do, so there's no reason to not do it. Also, yeah, no, never mind. We're entering the boss fight at 117. This boss fight takes a little under 3 minutes. So we can still sub 120. Uh, I don't believe we can take third with this run, unfortunately. Not with the, uh, the Bentley skip mishap, but if the Bentley skip mishap didn't happen, we could have we could have potentially gotten third. Should have been, which would have been actually really cool. My goal uh, coming into this was I wanted to get at least sub 120. I felt like that would be acceptable for a for a no reset marathon style run, where I was gonna go for all of the hard tricks, save for Dread Swamp Path Jump, because I just don't do it enough. Um, so yeah, uh, to put in perspective, world record is right now 117.42. And then my PB is uh, a few seconds slower than that. It's like 11 seconds slower. So we have uh, we still have about a minute 15, not a minute 15, but a minute 30 left in the boss fight. Also, the music here is fantastic. Here. This part coming up. I just had to be quiet for that, that last little bit of like... <clears throat> it sounds kind of like an organ to me, like a pipe organ section. Um, but now I can explain uh, this little bit. So this phase, you, you dodge through these four rings and then Carmelita, the police officer that's been chasing us this whole time, uh, she's kind of teamed up with us to, to take down Clockwork. She shoots um, four set points on his body in a row, and they're the same every time. And you can kind of pre-aim these spots and get a bunch of shots off on them and like send them in the air. So uh, the damage, so the, the thing will take damage and whatnot. Or so Clockwork will take damage. <clears throat> also, I'm gonna go for this jump to, to guarantee sub one sub 120. But uh, this jump is very difficult, very precise. If I don't get it, I'm not gonna try it again. Nice, Clockwork jump. Final thing in the game, <laughs> aside from getting proxied off of Clockwork. And uh, time is coming up now. <laughs> so, 
So, 11941. Uh, 11941. That is actually really close to third place. Not, uh, not bad. I had taken down each member of the. I'm actually extremely happy with that. Mugshot, Ms. Ruby, the Panda King, and finally Clockwork. Only half a minute of one by one and reclaim my birthright. So, uh, of course, yeah, no sub 120. That was that was my goal. My I didn't actually think I was going to be able to uh, to hit that, given how bad my my early game was. But uh, yeah, I hit my goal. So I'm I'm happy for sure. I hope uh, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed it, and uh, thank you, the Dijin Dash crew for for having me on and whatnot. Uh, there's nothing else from here on. It's just uh, a cutscene. Yeah. We don't have to watch, so if you uh, if you're ready to uh, to kind of move on and whatnot, uh, say goodbye to everyone. And whatnot. Right. And yeah. First, want to thank you for this amazing run. I oh, enjoyed it. Thank you, man. I, uh, I appreciate that. I'm glad I could do it. I thought for sure she was gonna slap the hand. Alrighty, right without further ado, let's be ready Instead, to cruise sure to for the USA.